I guess what can I say uh, about this uh, about this pr next presenter that we have? But uh, all I know is, uh, you know, having been in the community, I've heard of uh, Boot Logic. I've heard of the name for a long time, and uh, I have to say we are very delighted, and it's about time that uh, we finally have Boot Logic come and present here at the Pack Attacking Village um, here at DefCon. So. Boot Logic's name is synonymous. I mean, if you try to look up cross-site scripting, Boot Logic is synonymous. Uh, name is synonymous. Uh, and uh, before I begin, I do want to make a personal rag. I, we still have no idea why in the world you use Cristiano Ronaldo in your present and your title slide. Without much ado, Boot Logic. Thank you. Thank you. So, hi everyone. Sounds good. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Rodolfo Assis from Brazil, better known as Brute Logic. And we are going to, to see what can be done with it for the win. So uh, I'm, I'm working at Sukuri Security, you guys there, please, uh, which is a GoDaddy company for the wing also. And I do some cross-site scripting, uh, filter bypass, and some bash stuff. I help it to fix some vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities out there, but uh, you won't see me any Hall of Fames, except the Microsoft one, because who is not there, right? But, and I have an on, on, online access tool and discovery service. Okay, uh, this is going to be a fast-paced talk about the dangers of XSS with a little intro to it for those who don't know it. XSS is a, is a way to execute JavaScript code in Victim's browser. Uh, the browser uses a programmatic model of the document in order to, to, to display it. So we can use JavaScript to, to do almost everything in, in browser. Here's a classical example of a PHP code. We have a, a variable user, which is printed back to the screen. Then we have the input John. But if we change the input for an XSS vector, we got the, this pop-up, which is a proof of concept of the cross-site script. OK, we have uh, two, many, two main types, you know. Uh, server-based, which can be reflected or stored, and client-based after the code get processed by the JavaScript engine in the browser. OK, so after, after it, we can simply keep popping on it, you know? We have to do something with it. We have virtual defacement. What is that? It's a way to, to to change the look of the page. And this might impact some uh, business decision, for example, like buying and selling of stocks or bitcoins. Here is a simple code which don't really use JavaScript. It's just uh, an HTML, HTML code to change the, change the page with a picture. And here is more, a more complex one. It was a kind of a joke, which I altered the headline of the, this website with this code. We have an iframe. And then, because the, the cross-site scripting is on a search feature of the site, we have to call the, the page first, use the source. And then we make some stylish over it. And finally, with the onload event handler, 
we are able to use the JavaScript to, to change the, the headline. Here's another one. We can uh, access everything inside the page with JavaScript. So we can grab uh, personal information like credit card, social security number, or phone number, address. We are able also to log what Vicky is typing. And we can also, we can also fake, uh, uh, build a fake log login form to grab credentials. Here is the code of the keylogger. We have two, two files. The PHP one is for uh, log. It opens a file and, and writes on it. And the GS one, it's the one that, that takes the, what the victim press, the keys, and send to the PHP file. Here is a GIF showing this in action. I'm typing this at this side, and on the other side, the file is being updated. Okay, account stealing. We can steal cooks, you know, but uh, now, usually, we, we will face HTTP one, HTTP one uh, flagged ones. So, but we can still comp compromise the account using password change or email change functionality. Uh, which are unprotected, like, sorry, okay. Here is a code, short uh, JavaScript code to still cook, a simple one. And here is uh, an example of the unprotected password chain in WordPress.com. Okay, memory corruption. Thanks to the guys at Metasploit, it's easy to, to load some exploits against the browser victim. Here is the Metasploit beast. It's called a browser auto pound. There is the first and the second version, which will launch uh, memory exploits Memory based exploits against the browser. To do that, we don't. We only need to call an image with with a source of the attack domain, attacker domain. Access as well. Like any worm, we, we can simply spread it across the database and try to compromise all the accounts of the so social network. And probably the admins also. Here is an experiment. Of an excess of warm in action. You guys can watch it later. CMS. We have a guy here, expert in CMS, Mark. We can use XSS to, to achieve code execution at the CMS install. We just need to get the anti surf token, token and submit it. WordPress is by far the most used CMS nowadays. In my blog, I have code for all three, WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal. We are going to see now the WordPress one, the, the code to, to make an XSS becomes code execution, code execution in the website. We are using Hello Dolly plugin. And then we start defining some variables the path, the file, and the payload, which will be a, a 
reverse shell. Use, we are using netcat to get a reverse shell. We take the let's see, surf token with the first request. The dollar variable is the post body that will be used here. And finally, we fire the request to to make the PHP code execute and open the netcat listener. Here's the GIF showing. Admin is open the the post to preview, and then the shell is open the other side. We have a less dangerous outcome with uh, like faster download of files, denial of service, and we can also can can get some geolocation or audio video capture, but with permission of the victim. It's very easy to to deliver XSS because we can share in social networks. We can disguise it with URL shortened services, and we also have spam spare phishing and water hole techniques to to help the attacker or the test. Here are some reference of my blog and my YouTube channel, so you guys can see, can check later. And here is a reminder, if you are not convinced yet of uh, how, how much dangerous can be an uh, XSS attack. Okay, uh, any questions? Which one? Okay. okay. The slides will be online probably today. Okay. The worst thing? Uh, we we can execute code in the the website, you know. Uh, if if you if you know how to to make the request, and if the admin is XSS with it, with the link of the page, with the XSS. How do you uh, how do you protect yourself? I usually use uh, separate browsers uh, for for each thing. So my blog, for example, I use another browser just for it, just to, to make the, the update, just to access the dashboard. And I use another one to navigate. So XSS will, uh, ha has to be fired in the same browser. It can, I, ca I can't be XSS in my blog uh, if I don't use that browser to, to navigate, to open links, malicious links. A user have, has to rely on, uh, on the browser uh, filter, for example, Chrome, or it has to rely on simply not clicking on links that come to your inbox. And that kind of security measures everyone has to, to take. Okay. Yeah. A, a plugin, browser plugin. You uh, you mean the uh, uh, an XSS vector to use? No, for computer side. 
user side. No, no, not yet. I don't, I don't have one. Anyone? Anyone else? Anyone else? Going once? Going twice? Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Good logic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.